This is section 8.2, which is circles and ellipses. We are going to talk about transforming the unit circle, geometry of an ellipse, translations of ellipses, orbits and eccentricity, and reflective property of an ellipse. So an ellipse is a set of all points in a plane whose distance from two fixed points in the plane have a constant sum. The fixed points are you can say foci or foci, which is the plural of focus of the ellipse. And the line through the foci is the focal axis. The point on the focal axis midway between the foci is the center. And the points where the ellipse intersects its axis are the vertices of the ellipse. So we're going to look at that in the next slide here. So the center, so you can have a wide ellipse, which we say that the um, focal axis is um, horizontal, or you can have a tall ellipse where the focal axis is vertical. So we have a center and we have a distance. So the distance between the center and each focus is um, C, is your C value. And then the distance between the center and the vertex is A. And then if we draw a line between the center and the minor axis, that's going to be B. So those are your A, B, C values, and we'll talk in a minute about the Pythagorean relation with those. Okay, so again, just like with the parabolas, we have a list for all the special things with um, an ellipse with center at zero, zero. Um, I included this in the video, but I'm not going to write all of these down into the notes because we can apply a center at zero, zero with, um, with these formulas, which account for any ellipse that we have. So what you need to know with ellipses is that your major axis is always going to be A. So A could be horizontal or A could be vertical. And so... A is always going to be a bigger number than B. B will always be your distance from the center to the minor axis. So you can see if we look at this equation here, so this is going to be um, our equation for a wide ellipse. So you'll notice that the bigger number is under the X. So that's how I remember that, okay, X axis goes left and right. So this is going to be an ellipse that goes is longer in the left and right direction. Whereas if you look over here, at this one, you'll notice that the bigger number, the A, is under the Y squared. So that's going to be a tall ellipse. Okay, so then here's all the information. We can find the focal axis, the foci, the vertices, and then we have the semi-major and semi-minor axis. And then finally, the Pythagorean relation. So we're going to look at visually what that means in, on another slide here in a second. But we talked about the A, B, and C distances. So what we need to remember is that A squared is going to be equal to B squared plus C squared. And we'll see that in a second. Okay, so these are um, ellipses with centers at HK. So maybe not centered at the origin. And you can see um, this is kind of the, the table values that we saw in the previous slide. This is applied to a picture. Okay, and so here's our Pythagorean relation. So you can see that we have our right triangle there, and our A distance is going to be the hypotenuse of our triangle. So it's kind of like the Pythagorean theorem, but not exactly. But it, I mean, it is, but it's just the A, B, and C are not the same as what we're used to seeing with the um, Pythagorean theorem. So we can see that our, this is our B, this is our C, and the hypotenuse is A. So that's why we're getting A squared equals b squared plus c squared. Okay, so let's look at some examples. So our first example says to find the vertices and the foci of the ellipse 9x squared plus 4y squared equals 36. So first of all, we know that the standard form of the equations is equal 1, so we need to divide the whole equation by 36. So if I have 9 36, that would simplify to 1 fourth. So it'd be x squared over 4. If I have 4 36, that would simplify to 1 ninth, and 36 over 36 is 1. I can leave it like this, 
But if you want it to be consistent with the um, format of what you saw in the notes in the previous slide, you can also rewrite it with the y being first. So y squared plus 9 over x squared, over, sorry, y squared over 9 plus x squared over 4 equals 1. Okay, so if we want to find, um, so our center would be 0, 0 on this one because we have no h and k with the x and the y, so our center is at 0, 0. My vertices, so before we find all that, let's identify what a, b, and c are. So a is always going to be my bigger number of the denominators. So a squared is 9, which means a is 3. And b squared is 4, which means that b is 2. So now if I want to find c, I can say, okay, a squared plus b squared equals, nope. <laughs> See, I fall into that Pythagorean theorem every time. Okay, a squared equals b squared plus c squared. So if I rearrange that, c squared would be a squared minus b squared. So it would be 9 minus 4, which is 5. So that means that c is going to be the square root of 5. So that tells me, so my vertices, this prob or this ellipse is going to be tall because the bigger number is under the y. So I know that my x coordinate of my center is going to stay the same, so 0. And then my y coordinate is going to be plus or minus a, so be plus or minus 3. And then for the foci, again, my x coordinate, my h stays the same. And then my y coordinate of, the, of each focus is going to be my k value or my y value of my center plus or minus c, which would be plus or minus the square root of 5. Okay, here's our next one. Find an equation of ellipse with foci at negative 2, 0 and 2, 0, whose minor axis has a length of 2. So just like always, I prefer to sketch this. So... Um, if the foci are at 2, 0 and negative 2, 0. So that tells me because of where they are, I know that my center is going to be at 0, 0. And it also tells me, so my foci are located on my major axis. So I know that this is going to be an ellipse that is wide. It's going to have a horizontal focal axis. And then, but it says my minor axis has a length of 2, which means that it's going to be up 1 and down 1 from the center. So I'm just going to kind of sketch this. So I know, I don't know A in this case. That's my distance from the center to the major axis. But I do know B. B would be half of the distance of the minor axis length, so it would be 1. Um, and then C, I do know that. C is the distance from my center to focus, so that would be 2. So I can say A squared equals 1 squared plus 2 squared, so that would be 5. So A squared equals 5, so A is the square root of 5. So I want to write the equation. So I know that my A value is going to go under the X because this is a horizontal major axis ellipse, so I'm going to write x squared over a squared, so that would be 5, because it's square root of 5 squared, and then y squared over 1 equals 1. Okay, next example says to find the standard form of the equation for the ellipse whose minor axis has endpoints at negative 1, 4, and 5, 4. So if I sketch this, sorry, my dog's barking. Okay, so at negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4. So those are the minor axis endpoints. So I know that my center is going to be halfway between those. So that tells me that my center is at the point 2, 4. And the fact that the major axis has a length of 8 tells me that I'm going to go 4 in either direction from the center. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4. That's going to be my, um, my vertex. And then down 4, 1, 2, 3, be at 0. 
so I can kind of sketch. There's my ellipse. So if I'm trying to write the equation, again, I want an A value and a B value. So, and I don't, if, if I had C, I could factor in C to use it to find A or B. But um, on this one, I know that A is four and B is three, because that's, this distance is four and this distance is three. So, and this is a tall ellipse, so I know that my y, my y um, part of the equation is going to have the a value under it. So this would be y minus 4 squared over 16 plus x minus 2 squared over 9 equals 1. Okay, next one says to find the center vertices and foci of the ellipse. Okay, so first thing first, I want to find the center. So that would be negative 1, 1. I'm going to find my A, B, and C values to help me find these things. So I can tell A is the bigger denominator. So A would be the square root of 9, which is 3. B would be the square root of 4, which is 2. And then I can find C squared would be a squared minus b squared. So that would be 9 minus 4, so c is going to be the square root of 5 again. So these, um, this ellipse is tall, again, because my bigger number is under the y. So I know that, so if we start with the vertices, I know that for the vertices that my x-coordinate, negative 1, is going to stay the same, and then I'm going to take my k value, my 1, plus or minus a, so we could write it like that, or we could write it as negative 1, 4, and negative 1, negative 2. And then my foci are at the points negative 1, and then be 1 plus or minus square root of 5. And again, sometimes it might ask you to approximate, so get the decimal values of those, and sometimes you want to leave them as radicals. Okay, so... Where you see ellipses in real life, elliptical orbits. So this is kind of a real life example. Um, so different planets have different levels of, um, or how, what would the word be, but they can be more elongated ellipses or more circular. And technically we can lump circles into this category of ellipses as well. So the last thing to mention is eccentricity. So the eccentricity of an ellipse tells you how, um, how oval-shaped or circular-shaped or how elongated versus circular it is. So E is equal to C divided by A. So that's how we're finding that. If you have a circle, so a circle would have an E value that is zero because in a circle, your A is equal to your B. So it's the same equation that we're looking at as an ellipse, except your a and b values would be the same because your minor axis and major axis would be the same distance away from the center. So if you have a very elongated ellipse, that e value would be close to 1. So if it's asking you to find the eccentricity, closer to 1 is going to be more elongated and closer to 0 is going to be more circular. Okay, so that is all 